Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, in this video, what we're gonna be doing is reviewing the internet's best grow lights. Our specific focus is going to be the E26 or screw-in fittings like this one. And we're gonna be comparing eight of the most popular options in terms of their output, efficiency, light distribution, color temperature, and a whole lot of other parameters. I'm also doing a giveaway in this episode. Uh, the first time we've done anything like this, but stick around because they're very, very first thing I'm going to do is show you how you can enter the giveaway to win uh, nearly $250 worth of grow lights. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, I recently bought eight of the top selling E26 grow lights. Now that we've published this video though, I don't actually need this many grow lights. I live in a one bedroom apartment here and there simply isn't room to use all of them. So what I decided to do is give them away to one lucky winner. Um, in order to enter this competition, all you have to do is pick one of the grow lights that you see on screen right now, leave a comment below and tell me which one of these you think is the best. Doesn't matter what answer you pick, I'm just curious based on the information you see here, which is the most interesting to you. Um, I'm actually gonna be offering you a uh, second entry at the end of the video. So don't worry, there's plenty of time to change your mind. Now, if you're watching this video before this date, then the competition is still open. If you're watching the video after this date, then unfortunately you are no longer eligible for the grow lights because the winner will be announced on this date. However, I would still love to know what you think. So again, leave a comment below and let's dive in. So what we're gonna be doing today is comparing these eight grow lights based on a number of really important metrics and points of comparison. Uh, I'm also going to be making some of my own assumptions and inferences here around things like the coefficient of utilization uh, and light temperature, because there's a number of places where the information is just not published and available. Other thing I'm gonna do today is call out some of these manufacturers based on what I would argue is some slightly misleading information uh, in some cases. And depending on when you are watching this video, uh, this information may or may not have been updated when you go and check out these listings. So the main sources of information that I am relying on to do this review is firstly, publicly available information uh, from either the listing themselves or the packaging of the product. Uh, secondly, I have a PAR meter, uh, which is how we measure PPFD for life. Uh, I'm also using a watt meter so that I can validate that the wattage these things are drawing um, matches with what the manufacturers are saying. And really the rest of what I'm using here is just my own knowledge and experience of grow lights to kind of connect dots and figure out what we can. Now, some of the things I have not done in this video is firstly, I haven't used a spectrometer. Um, the reason for that is that they cost thousands of dollars and I don't have one. The other thing that I don't have is an integrated sphere. Um, it's a complicated piece of light measuring equipment, usually only owned by actual light manufacturers. Um, and I can't afford the time, the space or dollars to have one. So I'm not using one of them either, but technically you'd have slightly more accurate results if you did. So before we dive in and start reviewing all of these grow lights, I did want to take just a minute to mention why we are so focused on these E26 type lights. There's clearly a lot of other options out there. But the focus of this video is E26. And I think you might be interested in this sort of globe. Uh, firstly, because they're relatively affordable. Um, the units that we're testing today will set you back between $10 and $85 on the high end. But most of them are in like the $20 to $30 type range. So even after you include the cost of a stand and maybe an automated timer, you probably got an entire grow light set up for less than about 40 bucks. Uh, the second reason is that they're very versatile. Um, because they don't come with the housing or fitting, they're very easy to integrate into your home. Um, so you can get a you know, lampshade or whatever to kind of match the decor of your space. So for that reason, we think they're quite easy to integrate into living areas. And the third reason, which is really just a summary of the first two, is because they're just very beginner friendly. So if you're looking at making your first grow light purchase, then I would definitely recommend that you start with an E20 screw-in type grow light 
like this one. Okay, so let's dive in and start looking at some numbers. Now, if your sole objective here is to get as much light put as you can for every dollar that you spend, there's three units that you should be focused on. Firstly, you're gonna to wanna to look at the GE 32 watt. Then I would recommend the Canagro um, 35 watt. And then third place, I would put the GE 9 watt. Um, these ranked the highest in terms of PPF per dollar of purchase price. Now, the upfront purchase price of these units is generally only between 30 and 50% of the total ownership cost. So rather than buying a grow light based on PPF per dollar or purchase price, I would actually argue that you should put a bit more weight on PPF per watt, uh, which is kind of the efficiency. So these units range in wattage from nine to 35 watts on the high end. But as we explained in this video up here, uh, plants don't consume watts. It's not their source of energy. They consume PPF. So I would argue that probably the most important metric to be thinking about for any grow light uh, is the PPF per watt, uh, also known as efficacy or PPE. Now the best grow lights that we tested in terms of efficacy, number one uh, was the GE 32 watt, in second place was the Sansi 10 watt, and in third place uh, was the Vita, uh, which is a 20 watt unit. Shown on this graph is both the numbers that these manufacturers claim, uh, as well as what I've been able to validate with my own testing. Okay, so the next number I wanted to compare is life expectancy of these globes. So the units that we're looking at today uh, ranged from uh, 15,000 to 50,000 hours in terms of their life expectancy. Uh, at the risk of stating the obvious, I have not actually sat around for 50,000 hours uh, validating these claims. So we're kind of taking a little bit of a leap of faith here with some of these numbers. Now that said, I do wanted to point out a couple of things uh, with this life uh, expectancy data. Number one is the high hydro and house bright grow lights. House bright didn't publish a number. Um, I did ask a question about it on their Amazon listing and the answer that I got from another customer was that it was uh, 15,000 hours. Now this grow light, I'm pretty sure came out of the exact same factory as the high hydro LED and what's interesting about that is that high hydro uh, quotes a life expectancy of 50,000 more than three times as much now I haven't been able to validate either number um, my intuition is that the right answer is probably somewhere in the middle uh, but I just wanted to to kind of point out uh, that discrepancy there um, with the data that I'm showing on screen right now the second point is that ideally what we should be doing here is going and counting the number of LEDs and calculating the watts per LED um, the reason for that is that when you put more watts through an LED, they run hotter, they run harder, and they tend to burn out much faster. So generally, what I would expect to see is a fairly linear correlation between life expectancy and watts per LED. Um, I haven't been able to do that here because of the design of a lot of these units. It would have meant that I had to destroy them or, or dismantle them. Uh, and I didn't want to do that because that, my friends, would have ruined your prize. So I've worked on the assumption that you would like to have these grow lights intact and therefore I haven't uh, smashed them to go and count LED chips. But anyway, um, if you wanted to really get into it, then that is something that I would recommend you look at. So next up, let's talk about color. Um, now, a lot of these companies didn't publish uh, the color temperature, which is measured in kelvins for their grow lights. So what you're seeing now does include quite a lot of my own guesstimates or assessments. Um, so it may not be 100% accurate, but I did want to give you some guidance here. So if you live in a very, very warm climate um, or you have very, very large indoor spaces, then generally speaking, you're gonna to wanna to look for a higher color temperature, something up around the 5,000, 5,500 Kelvin. That is a very cool blue tint to the light uh, and it will play, might make your environment feel you know, cool and refreshing. If however, you live in a cooler climate, or if you have a much smaller living space, then generally I'm gonna recommend you look for something with a much, much lower Kelvin. Um, somewhere in 2700 to 3000 type range is gonna give you a fairly warm glow. Uh, and if you, yeah, it's just gonna basically make the space feel a lot more cozy and inviting. 
in my opinion. The other sort of grow light that we have here, there is one uh, that's kind of the, the blurple, uh, the mix of blue and red. They don't really work on a Kelvin range, but for reasons that I'm going to talk about at a later time, um, if the video is up, I'll include the link here. I uh, haven't done it yet, but um, I don't recommend you actually buy a purple grow light. There's a whole lot of reasons for that. We'll be cover covering them soon in a separate video. Um, but yeah, I, I would stay away from uh, the purple ones. The good news is though, um, both House Bright and High Hydro offer multiple color options. I've got the purple uh, pie hydro here and the white house bright, but both, both brands do multiple colors. So they're kind of interchangeable. Okay, so we looked at the light distribution of all of these globes in two separate ways. What you're looking at is basically a light intensity curve. And this was measured essentially going across the table from left to right or front to back. Now there's generally two types of grow lights here. Um, grow lights with that have a higher coefficient of utilization or CU, they generally have optics or lenses. And what they're doing is channeling that light into a very, very small area. So it's more like a spotlight type effect. These sort of grow lights are gonna be useful if you have only a small grow area, obviously. Um, they're gonna be useful if you're trying to grow flowering or edible plants because you need to have much higher concentration of light for them. And they're also gonna be useful if you just kind of care a lot about the ambience of your, your living space and you don't wanna have the entire space uh, lit up by this grow light. On the other hand, uh, there are some grow lights here that have a much, much lower coefficient of utilization and a much, much wider beam angle and distribution of light. Um, these lights are generally gonna need to be located much, much closer to the plant um, because they're gonna degrade much faster with distance. Um, they're generally gonna be better for larger growing areas, plants that require less light, um, maybe leafy green, seed starting, that sort of thing. Uh, they're generally gonna be better candidates. The other place you could use a uh, light like this, of course, is in a grow tent. So what you have in a grow tent is reflective walls. Uh, so even if you have light leaking out the sides, it doesn't matter because it'll bounce straight back in. So the final measure that I wanted to talk about in this review is a more subjective and qualitative one, but it's basically listing accuracy. Um, something that I did observe when I was going through and looking at all of this data and information is that some of these manufacturers seem to be much more reliable, uh, shall we say, than, than others in terms of the information that they're sharing about their products. This range of discrepancy range from a little bit off. I mean, if it's a few percent here and there, I'm happy to put that down to just a testing error, um, which I'm certain existed. Um, but there's some of these discrepancies that are more than just a testing error. And uh, I would have to say that some of this information is just flat out wrong. Okay, so that's all I've got for you today, guys. I do hope you found this useful. Uh, if you're interested in seeing part two of this series, make sure you subscribe to the channel. In a few weeks, we'll be back with another video. And what we're gonna be doing there is providing a breakdown. Um, we'll digest all of this information, but most importantly, what I'm gonna do is provide some grow light recommendations for you on specific scenarios. So the outline of video two is we're going to look at uh, which is the best grow light for seed starting, which is the best grow light for leafy greens, which is the best grow light for fruit and veg, and are there maybe some grow lights in here that I would not recommend at all really under any scenario? Yes, I'll give you a hint, there are. So stay tuned if you wanna check that one out. Uh, it'll be out in a couple of weeks. Okay guys, before we wrap up here, uh, I just wanted to share with you how you can enter the Grow Light giveaway competition for a second time, super easy. So we've now reviewed all of these Grow Lights and if you want a second entry ticket and it is before this date, then the competition is still open. And all you have to do is write another comment. And this time what I want you to do is tell me what, whether you've changed your mind. Do you have a new favorite Grow Light from the options that we looked at today? Again, it doesn't matter what you pick before and after. All I'm really interested in is whether this video uh, has been able to change your mind. Um, was I able to sway you at all? Anyway, um, I hope you found this useful. I will be back next Friday with another video. Uh, until then, stay well, stay happy, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.